Hi, friends. I'm Kerry Farr. Welcome to In Your Corner. I want to welcome a great friend, Ben Chapman and yes, Michael sir. Kilgore to the set today. Good to see you, fellas. Good to see you. Thanks for having us here. Well, Ben, you and I have been friends since 1982 or 1983. Yes, sir. And you had a vision in those days to start a Christian camp. Right. And uh, take us back to those days and give us a little background as we move forward on the program today. Yes, thank you, Kerry. Good to see you, by the way. Uh, we go way back. So, well, uh, back in uh, the early uh, 70s, I guess, uh, I got saved. God uh, called me to preach. And uh, we had a farm up near uh, Smithfield, Tennessee, DeKalb County. And, uh, well, I was pastoring a church in Salina, First Baptist Church in Salina. And God just began to work on my heart about starting a camp. And You owned well, a lot of land or something at the time. It was about 400 acres. Right. There on Center Hill Lake, mm -hmm. just outside of Smithfield. Well, I started trying to give it away to somebody because I wanted to stay in Salina, Tennessee, and continue to pastor that church, but God had a different plan. And in 1982, we formed Lighthouse Christian Camp. Started out with uh, just a very taking the home and uh, a couple of horse barns we had and converting them into cabins and ended up, uh, my wife lost her washer and dryer in the, uh, <laughs> in the utility room and we put two residential stoves in and the kids ate out under the trees. Well, the camp started with... Uh, me just trying to obey God and having a camp. And it was Not real more. primitive as you're, as you're in, in, yes. in the beginning, yes. yes. Well, uh, that first year, uh, we uh, just had maybe two or three weeks of camp. I continued to pastor that church in Salina. Then up, coming up into uh, 83, uh, God spoke to my heart and says, well, you need to just resign the, the uh, church in Salina move back to uh, Smithville, and trust me to get this camp going. So we did that. And in the summer of 83, as we were having a uh, camp and doing everything uh, very, very primitively, my wife was in the kitchen, in the utility room, cooking. We brought the food out, put it under the trees, out back of the house. We had cut timber and off the place. The ground. <laughs> yes, sir. We had cut uh, trees off the place to build two outhouses. We had a boys' outhouse and a girls' outhouse. <laughs> We strung up a little place for, uh, actually it was just a water hose, and they had to have their bathing suits on to, to take a shower. And we basically walked to the lake. So we, but we, we were preaching the gospel. God was doing a work. And these were church kids we were bringing. Well, you know, being so busy, really struggling uh, to be able to just pay the bills to have kids there. Uh, God then spoke to my heart and says, what are you going to do about those children that nobody cares about? Amen. The forgotten, the helpless, the fatherless. And so I'd go to different people and I'd say, hey, what do you think about that idea of bringing kids, you know, and they won't pay because they can't come any, any other way. And they'd say, oh, that, that's a nice idea. And uh, one day uh, you were teaching my Sunday school class. And, uh, and so I say to you uh, and your beautiful wife, Diane, and I said, Hey, uh, what do you think about this? And you came up on a Sunday afternoon. We had one week left in that summer of 83. And we sat down and I began to ask you, uh, well, listen, Kerry, uh, what do you think about this? You, oh, good idea, good idea. And so, I, so hesitant, I was afraid you were going to say no uh, to anything. I said, uh, well, will you help me? You said, yeah, I'll help you. I says, well, uh, how are we going to get the kids? And, well, I don't know. I said, will you help me get the kids? He said, yeah, I'll help you get the kids. So you and I, uh, and we finally got a few volunteers, came down to Nashville here. Saturday was the only time we really had because we had camp going on the other weeks. So coming up to that last week, which was in August, of camp, we walked the streets down here in Nashville. We'd find a kid on the street and say, hey, you want to go to camp? What kid don't want to go to camp? We'd say, we got horses up there. We got a lake. Yeah. In an amazing way, we'd go to knock on the door. We had a form for them to sign. You know, they'd fill a form out. The bus going to leave a certain time. We brought, at, th at that time, uh, we didn't know much. <laughs> uh, I'll say that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we brought kids all the way from about 8 years old to 16, 17-year-olds, boys and girls, blacks and whites, 
uh, just a mixture of a lot of, you know, needy kids. Bunch of outlaws, actually. It was. It was. <laughs> and uh, we brought them up there to camp, and we had a ride. I mean, but the thing of it is, down under the hill there, we'd hung a light bulb off of a limb. When we started preaching the gospel, we saw tremendous changes in these kids' lives. Well, Ben, I'm, I'm amazed because you've done this since that time in 1983. I remember that we actually went and took a bus down to the housing projects downtown Nashville and picked up a busload of kids and took them to camp. And I volunteered that first week. Yes, sir. And those kids were so mean, and I was a pretty rough guy, but it traumatized me so much I haven't been back in all these years, and you've stayed. Well, so you, bring us up to date. We, uh, you know, we've only got a couple minutes before we go to break, but bring us up to date and tell us what Lighthouse Christian Camp is doing today. I thank God for you, Kerry, because, you know, God used you in that very first week of camp there to give me the courage to step out, and you did help me, and we, we, we had a time. Well, since that time when... On Saturday, when that bus pulled, pulled out after all week long, we had started out with kids fighting and all kind of things going on. And they, uh, you know, but by, by Saturday morning, when they got on that bus and started pulling out of there, they were weeping and begging to stay at camp. Yes. When that bus pulled down the driveway of the camp there, God spoke to my heart and says, this will there'll be no more church kids. Change your on, vision. You're on. You'll bring all children to camp free of charge because they would have no other way to come unless we gave them that opportunity to come. Parents wouldn't pay to send them if they could afford to send them. But, uh, so since then, since 1983, uh, we, we now have about 120 kids each week of camp. We've built a second camp. We do have, we don't have the outhouses anymore. We got, <laughs> you got, we got a little nicer facility. Yeah. Oh, now I know. You've got a, you've got a multi-million God has dollar been place there now. Yes. Friends, we're going to go to a short break. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned to In Your Corner to hear the rest of Ben's amazing story. We learn about God, and it's a good place to come because we, well, we're going to be able to do a lot of things, and all the counselors, they're nice. Um, it lets me get closer to God and be with my friends and everything and meet new friends do a lot of activities and learn about God. I came here by my sponsor, her name is Rhonda, and um, I came here to learn about Jesus and see nature and have fun. Okay, friends, we're back with Ben Chapman. And his friend Michael Kilgore, good to see Kilgore, good to see you guys again. Ben, before the break, you were talking about that first mission camp that you yes, had, sir. and it God changed your heart, and and you decided to start going after the the children that didn't have a father, didn't have a mother, and things like that. Tell us more about your your, your vision there. Well, uh, we know God's heart. Uh, he commands us through the scriptures, you know, to help the fatherless, the helpless, but. Uh, my wife and I, uh, in bringing those children there, uh, saw the great needs in these children's lives because so many of them, you know, a lot of people may not know, but so many children never even heard of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Never even knew uh, anything about the Bible or anything like that. So when the children arrive there, we just shower them with love. And we see tremendous changes. We believe it's the power of the gospel of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ that changes lives. We're faithful to preach the gospel on every activity. We're sharing Jesus with them, teaching them to pray and everything. These children, even though they're, most of the time the, the uh, abuses and neglect children have suffered is manifested two different ways. Either they're so beat down and so afraid to even speak because many times they've been told you'll never amount to anything, you're worthless, with you never been born. And, uh, and so I, I think it's the great love of the, the Lord there through all of our staff and counselors and our faithfulness to preach the gospel. And God uses that. And these children come to learn that God does love them, that God does care about them. We see, we believe that you can't be saved until you come, come under conviction of sin. Yeah. And so these children, uh, they, 
they come to the place where they realize that they've done things wrong. We take them all the way from Genesis through the Bible. And so we, we've seen thousands and thousands of children that have never, would never have had the opportunity to come to know Christ unless we brought them free to Lighthouse Christian Camp. So you've seen thousands over thousands. the last almost 30 years. We have about 800 children come through each summer. Yeah. And so now you've got Michael involved. What, what does, made you decide to bring Michael on? Because we have uh, the, the, ground, the camp has grown tremendously. And God's faithfulness through the years, uh, we've taken every dollar God's given and we've expanded the facility. And now we, we've expanded to a second camp. Michael here directs uh, our camp number two, we call it, 400 acres there. And, uh, and we have another director, Matt Coker, that camp, uh, directs camp number one. And so with as many children as we have there and all the staff that's necessary to take care of 120 kids each week, you know, we need a lot of help. <laughs> right. That's amazing. And, Michael, I saw, I saw how primitive this was in the beginning because I was there the very first week and went and helped Ben. But, you know, tell us how this ministry has grown, and, you know, it's oh, just amazing. Goodness. Well, it's, it's amazing for my wife and I. As we, we've been here now six, this is our sixth summer, and, uh, of course, everything was beautiful when we came in. It paved roads and fences were lined, and it was just like driving into the Garden of Eden. Right. You know, scripture signs everywhere and swimming pools and uh, were the sacrifices that were made to get it to that point. And uh, we were just amazed when we, when we first became supporters of the camp and we began supporting financially. And, uh, and we would hear Brother Ben speak of and, and see the stewardship that they use stretching every dollar. We never throw away a two by four that's over 18 inches long. We, uh, yeah. And that's why God has been so faithful that uh, he's never incurred debt with any building that's been built. Even since we've been there in 2006, we went from having six people living on campus to now 22, 23 people living on campus. 27. Well, tell us, you know, because you've, the ministry is not only a camp. Tell us what all the camp is doing now, Ben, under, under this ministry. Well, praise the Lord. It, I, I, I want to get this in. It is absolutely a supernatural work of God. Amen. A miracle ministry born out of the heart of God for the poor, the needy, the fatherless, the orphan, and the widow. And so in, 19, in, in 2006, God spoke to my heart one night praying. He said, what are you going to do about the widow? And so we see a wonderful compatibility between the widow and uh, these children that, that have such great needs. That The widow, you know, many of them, pastors' uh, wives a lot of times have been living in them, maybe a parsonage all their life, have on a fixed income. We, uh, we built the first building that has four apartments in it with a common area. So four widows live in that, that building, and, and they minister to the children, help us with the after-school club, weekend retreats, all our discipleship program, help serve the meals and do all these things. It's just a wonderful compatibility there, but it gives them the opportunity to feel fulfilled in the later years of life. And, Ben, you also have, like, an orphanage or a ranch home for children. Tell us about that because there might be somebody somewhere that has a need that you can help fulfill. Well, only 50% of the children in this country today live with a mom and a dad. So many children are being raised by grandparents. And grandparents, they want to just be the grandparents, to love these kids and take the pressures of raising young ki kids that's been dumped on them. So we have a boy's home there and a girl's home. We call it the ranch homes, to where we have a mom and a dad in a home. And, and we will take private referrals from grandparents or whoever if, if parents are having difficulty with a child as an alternative to turning them over to the state in, in the foster care, we are an alternative to that. They can contact us. We will talk with them. It's just, they don't give up custody or anything like that. It's just a matter of passing power of attorney to us in order that we can care for their child. And, and Michael, we've got about 30 seconds before the break. You know, what do you see, you know, as far as the greatest need there now at the camp? Our greatest need is, is bodies on the ground to help us minister to the 800 Amen. kids that will be there. And then, of course, financial support. Again, we're, we're a total faith-based ministry. It's by what comes in the mail. Nothing no, from the government. No money from the government. From We're not on any large corporate donations. It's by moms and dads and grandmas and granddads that believe in the heart of the ministry that we're doing. It's amazing. Folks, we'll be back in just a moment to hear more about Lighthouse Christian Camp. 
<laughs> I'm standing here with my dear friend, Ermita Chapman. Her and Ben started Lighthouse Christian Camp, what, 28 years ago? 30, actually 31. Is this it? summer is the 31st. 31 years ago. 31. Did you ever dream when you started the camp with just those few kids that it would end up growing like this? It has been a total miracle every day that the camp has been going on. It's truly a miracle. Folks, this, this, this ministry has seen thousands of children come through it. Thousands of children have been saved in 31 years. Thousands of children. And if you want to be a part of that, if you want to be a part of seeing these souls saved when you get to heaven and having people thanking you like they do or are going to thank Ben and Armita, just call 615-597-1264 or go to lighthousechristiancamp.com and look these folks up right now. You'll be glad you did. Hey, Ben, before the break, and Michael, we were talking about the camp, and, and Ben, I want to go back, you know, 15 years in your life, because there was a tragedy that happened, and I, I happened to be there and see it, and it almost killed you. You lost your son, Justin, to cancer, and he was a dear friend of mine, and, and you know, was a dear friend of my daughter. They were about the same age. Tell us a little bit about that and how you overcame that. Well, uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, I learned one thing, never say to anybody, I understand, because every situation is different. You know, parents have lost their children. And it's just not natural. Yeah. <laughs> Something that uh, just, uh, you know, from the very depths of your emotions just rips you apart. Well, I'll tell you. Right before, in the last days of Justin, he was such a wonderful young man. Oh, he was incredible. Loved, loved he was God. incredible. Wonderful leader. He, he developed the Wilderness Trail there at camp. He had a great uh, sense of the needs of young children and wanted them to learn about. His theme for the Wilderness Trail was, in nature, the Creator's voice is not silent. And so in those last days before we lost Justin, uh, he would say, uh, Daddy loved Justin, and I say, yes, Daddy loved Justin. And then uh, I'd say, Justin loved Daddy. He'd say, yeah, Justin loved Daddy. And right near the last, we said that, and he says, Daddy and Justice love Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and I said, yeah, Daddy and Justice love Jesus. Well, he, he, he passed away within two weeks of the first week of camp for that summer. And a little guy, I was standing there uh, in the lunch line and, uh, and just way off in the distance thinking about Justin. And this little boy walks up to me. A little kid that didn't have a daddy that he looked to me as his daddy. Now, now they, they look to me as a granddaddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and this little guy walks up because this Justin passed away some 15 years ago now. And uh, he uh, he says, walks up to me and he says, uh, uh, Brother Ben loved TJ? Oh. And I said, yeah. Oh. Brother Ben loved TJ. So that's and a I, message I from said, God. Uh, wow. I said, uh, T.J. loved Brother Ben? Yeah. T.J. loved Brother Ben. Yes. And that just blessed my heart so. But being there with the children, and they helped my wife and I get through this. And, uh, you know, we knew the focus. Uh, God called us what he called us to do, and we continued. And that helped get us through. Well, we know Justin's in heaven. We know you're going to see him again. <laughs> and so, as a, you know... Since then, you've been able to be a father and Ermita, a mother to so many children, and God has used you uh, because of that. Michael, what you, you see these children come, and what type of changes do you see? And in and, and the backgrounds, what type of backgrounds do you see come into the camp? You know, we, we see kids from, from every walk of life, but 90% of the children that come to our camp do live without their fathers. Um, we see tremendous change from, from Monday uh, to, and Tuesday when they're, they're very standoffish, they're guarded. They want to see if you're going to stick around. Are you going to stick with me? And uh, on Wednesday, as they begin to hear the gospel preached, even before, because we never even give an invitation until Wednesday night, we want to make, make sure that we lay that foundation out. 
and by Wednesday and Thursday, as they hear of God's love and they begin to, to come to an understanding, and certainly those that then accept Christ as their Savior, we see such a turnaround where they just want to come and sit with you on the swing. They want to, as Brother Ben said earlier, you see children getting onto buses and crying, stretching their arms out, not wanting to leave, begging, can I please just stay here? It's a little slice of heaven for them Amen. for a few days, yeah. isn't it? You know, now, uh, Carrie, we've got, since we've been at this for 30 years now, we've got parents that are actually calling saying, how can I send my kid to camp? Yeah. And then they'll give a testimony like this. That place changed my life. I want my child to be able to come back to that camp. Well, so. I'm, a, I'm a testimony of that. My daughter went to the yeah. camp in the early days. My granddaughter's been twice. It's a wonderful place. I, you know, I, I love the camp and love your ministry. Uh, if somebody out there has a need, uh, a widow that, you know, or an orphan, uh, how can, how can they contact you and how can you help them? Well, yes, uh, we have a website. Uh, and so, uh, you want to, yes, go ahead. Uh, www.lighthousechristiancamp.com. Lighthousechristiancamp.com. Uh, right. And, uh, they can pull that up and learn more about the ministry. Just give us a call. You know, hey, I, I answer the phone. <laughs> so uh, just call, ask for Brother Ben, ask for Michael here, uh, and, and we'll be glad to talk to him. Maybe there's grandparents out there that are, are having difficulty raising a child and would like to talk to us about them coming and being there. Well, we'll come back with, the, folks, we'll come back with some closing thoughts in just a moment. But you can go to lighthousechristiancamp.com, get the phone number, and Brother Ben will actually pick up the phone if you have a need. And we'll be back with some closing thoughts in just a moment. Terry Farr has experienced many tragedies in his life and through the grace of Christ has been able to turn them into triumphs. In his book, Fight the Good Fight, he shares his God-given strategies for getting back up when life has knocked you down. Carrie feels so passionately about communicating the gospel message that he wants to give you his book for free. You can go to inyourcorner.tv and download a copy. Or if you want to help Carrie take his collection of powerful Christian stories around the world, for a minimum donation of $20, he'll send you a personally autographed copy of his book, Fight the Good Fight, as a thank you gift. Okay, friends, we're back with Ben and Michael from Lighthouse Christian Camp. Now, you know, we t we've talked a lot about the camp and the needs that you have. If there's somebody out here that wants to get involved and help with the camp, what can they do? Yes. Well, you know, there's many ways to serve, and uh, we do all the construction there ourselves. There's many ways they can come. So Greatest. somebody could get in an RV and come spend we the summer or the sites, winter sir. and yes. help you yes, sir. construct a yes, building or whatever? Yes, sir. And we do have some mission groups that do come, uh, you know, and serve that in that manner. Uh, so, and it can come in on, on an individual basis also. Uh, like, for example, one of our greatest needs is to have men and women come during our weeks of camp. All our girls' weeks are in June. Boys' weeks are in July. The, the husband and wife team could come and the, the husband or wife could work behind the scenes. The other serve in the cabin with a counsel, as a counselor. Yeah. And, Michael, what, what else can somebody do to help? Uh, is there some way they can help with discipleship or uh, minister to these kids somehow? Absolutely, because our, our camp doesn't stop at the end of summer. A lot of people say, what do you do in the off season? Uh, we, we, these children become our family, and we minister to them year-round. Once camp is over, we begin immediately bringing them back to camp at least once a month is our goal. It makes it difficult for those that live in the far-reaching areas, but uh, we bring them back for little mini weekend retreats where they come in on a Friday night and stay till Saturday. We have after-school club programs where we're bringing anywhere from 30 to 40 to 50 children per week every week, and we're feeding them a snack, having a Bible study, helping them with their homework, and investing in the lives of them and their family. And then we have a huge Christmas party right at the end of November, the 1st of December, where we allow them to come and actually shop 
for their parents. We give them play money, and they shop for their parents. To and, take uh, home a gift. And to take home a gift, many, many gifts. They'll have a bag full. I think last year we had over well over 10,000 gifts that were new gifts donated that these children were able to come and choose from and to bring home to their families so that they could experience that true meaning of Christmas and giving. Oh, wow. And how do they get back to the camp? I mean, generally, do they come on buses when they come? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It takes a, a great organized effort to get these kids back. Uh, we need cooperation from a number of churches to provide buses to get to 14 different counties in Middle Tennessee and the Nashville area. So we uh, that, that would be a big service to just help us with the transportation and getting those mm -hmm. kids back. Yeah, and so you're not limited to just folks here in, in the Middle Tennessee area, but, but but geographically, since it's so close, I mean, that's who you minister yes. to. But Matter of fact, we have a, a group that comes all the way from Wisconsin every year to help us with the Christmas parties, do construction. They come the day after Thanksgiving all the way from Wisconsin. They had about 33 yes. people, I think, there last year uh, to help us get through. Uh, we were we were working on a new another widow's home. We have two now. And, uh, and also helping get, get ready. It's a huge job just to get ready and place all the gifts out and, and be ready for this Christmas party. Yeah, well, we've only got a minute left, fellas, but I want to tell you what a joy it's been for me to see you here today and been all of these years, nearly 30 years, you've ministered to the fatherless and now the widow and the orphan. You've, you've taken, and, and those that are unsaved, you brought thousands of kids in there and, and led them to the Lord, and now you've brought widows in and helping them. It's just amazing. I'm just honored and privileged to thank have you, known you all you. these years, and thank you well, for allowing me to be involved. Thank you, and God gets all the glory. It's yeah. His ministry. Well, it, it has to be a God thing. I've yeah. seen what you've built there, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's amazing from those early days and what you've got now. It's just phenomenal. You know what? I've said often, I'm just glad God lets me stay there. <laughs> Amen. He lets you stay there. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Be sure and tune in to In Your Corner, same time, same station, next week. So you may get knocked down, but it's, and one thing that I learned in boxing as an amateur boxer, as long as I got up after I'd been knocked down, I wasn't knocked out. So if you get up, you might still have to fight, and you might have to fight a few more rounds. But if you'll just keep fighting and not quit, you'll be victorious.